Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, this lecture is about operations. Well, basically, let me start with a very simple example, and then we will all know what we are talking about. Okay, example is addition. Addition of, let's say, integer numbers. This is an operation. And there are many other operations which kind of behave like addition in some way or another. And uh, mathematicians, as, uh, as they always do, they abstract things. So the term operation actually is some kind of an abstraction from such operations as uh, addition, multiplication, rotation, etc. So um, let me start from, well, it's kind of a definition but not a very rigorous one. But at least you would understand what I'm talking about. First of all, operation is a function. Now, um, we all know that functions um, can have domain where the values of arguments are taken from, and codomain where the values of the function actually are located. So, what are domain and codomain uh, of operations we will be talking about. Well, we will be talking about two different kinds of operation. The unary and binary. All right. So, for a unary operation, this is um, some kind of a generalization or abstraction of um, such operations as, let's say, negation, when from a number 25 you get minus 25, from 13 you get minus 13. So these are functions of one argument, and what's important is that uh, the domain and codomain are exactly the same. So in case of, let's say, um, negation, uh, we can say that this is a function which has a domain, all real numbers, and the codomain, all real numbers. Or it can be integer to integer or something like this. So basically domain and codomain um, are exactly the same set. Um, basically that's it. That's all the most general definition of unary operation. Now, as far as binary operation is concerned, again, uh, this is something which is an abstraction from addition or multiplication when we have two different arguments uh, of the same type, and the value is also uh, of the same type. Now, mathematically speaking, uh, you can say, for instance, like addition, this is a function which is defined on set of all pairs of real uh, numbers, uh, and the result is another real number. Or it can be a set of pairs of integer numbers, and the result would be, let's say, integer number or something else. Uh, now, this set of pairs, by the way, it's ordered set of pairs, because there is a first argument and there is a second argument. Uh, in case of addition, it doesn't really matter because it, the addition of 5 plus 3 and 3 plus 5 are exactly the same. But there might be some other operations which do not have this important property. So in this case, we always talk about the first argument and the second argument, and the set of all pairs of these arguments are, uh, is called a Cartesian product of these two sets. So we have unary operations and binary operations. And in case of a unary, uh, the domain and codomain are exactly the same. In case of binary, uh, there is one particular set which serves as the component of Cartesian product for the argument, and it's the same set for uh, the results of the function. Okay, unary and binary, and we have learned about their domain and codomain. Basically, that's kind of a definition. Uh, of at least the operations which we will be talking about. Then, again, obviously since we have certain properties of such operations as uh, negation, rotation, or addition, or whatever, we will try to generalize. 
um, let, let me repeat again that mathematics is is kind of a form of art where mathematicians are experimenting with different creations of pure mind. Um, that's why we're talking about these generalizations, etc. If you can think about some practical um, implementation of operation of addition, yes, we all kind of use the uh, adding in our day-to-day -day -day life. But abstract operation, operations, which, which, which are unary, binary, whatever we, we will be learning, um, most of them don't really have any uh, implementation in real life. Pure creation of the mind. That's why mathematics is a form of art. Okay. Let's talk about um, uh, symbol, uh, symbols. Okay. Symbolically, um, operations can be uh, expressed in many different forms. For instance, if we are talking about unary operation, we can define it in um, some simple form, like y is equal to f of x, where x and y belong to the same set, whatever the set is, the domain and codomain. Domain and codomain are exactly the same, as we know, for unary operation, so that's one of the ways to, to, to describe it. Another way to describe it is something like this. It's an operation F, which uh, for each element of some set S has the corresponding function or operation, resu result of the operation uh, on this element in the, same, uh, in the same set. Sometimes it can be symbolized using something like this. All these um, uh, symbols basically mean exactly the same thing. But there is some operation which is a function which is basically a rule which for each element of some set which is a domain uh, puts into a correspondence an element of the same set um, yeah something like this also and again x and y belong to the same set of s so these are all symbolical uh, uh, demonstration uh, symbols of unary operation. Now, in case of binary operation, that's basically very simple. Uh, in exactly the same fashion, we can say something like this. In case of binary operation, when you have two arguments, so you can have something like z equals f of x, y, where x, y, and z belong to the same set S. Or you can have something like f, s, Cartesian product with, f, with s is um, result, results in s. Or um, f of x, y, results in z. Or any combination thereof. Sometimes, actually, we might use and something more uh, intuitive uh, symbol for abstract operation. Now, this intuitive symbol basically is uh, borrowed from addition or multiplication. So you know that if uh, A and B are two numbers, we can have something like this as a result of their addition. So in, in a more abstract sense, we can uh, invent some kind of a symbol um, which symbolizes this operation. So plus for addition, um, uh, dot or, or, or a small um, asterisk for uh, multiplication, well, I can say that something like this, pound sign, number sign, whatever you call it, can symbolize an operation. So x and y, that is an abstract uh, symbol for exactly the same thing as everything else before that. So this function f, uh, which has two arguments, can actually be represented symbolically as x, some symbol which I have chosen. It's not like generally acceptable. I just chosen to use this pound sign, number sign, uh, as, as a symbol of operation. And this is another argument. And here, it's very clear that there is a first argument, there is a second argument, there is an operation, and there is a result of this operation. 
Okay. Let's go on. Now, um, let's talk about unary operations first. Now, obviously we know that some unary operation converts an element from a domain uh, to uh, another element of the same domain. Now, I can actually have uh, either the same operation or a different operation, which is defined uh, on exactly the same set. Let's talk about different operation, which is also defined on the same set. I can define their consecutive uh, application on any element. So if there is an element x, let's say, which belongs to the domain s, I can first apply f and x will go to y. And then I can apply g to the result of the first operation to get the next element. So symbolically it can be written like this. y is equal to f of x z is equal to g of y, or since y is in turn the function of x, so z is equal to g of f of x. So if I have two operations, f and g, I can always uh, define their composition if they are defined, obviously, on the same domain. So there is a composition. And let me just define it this way. I'll use the symbol um, commercial at whatever uh, for ampersand for the composition. OK, so the composition of these two functions is a function which applied to any element x is consecutive application of one function, which is the closest to the x, and then the second one. And obviously, I can define a different composition. f and g of x, which is first you apply g, and to the result of the g you apply f. Are they the same? They might be the same, but might not. And let me just give you a couple of examples. Examples are interesting in this case. So we are talking about the unary operation, actually two different unary operations, uh, on the same set. And uh, uh, we are composing a combined um, operation uh, from these two. And we will try to find out whether we can reverse the uh, sequence of operations. Now, uh, from the first example, which I mentioned, the unary example, negation. Negation is actually um, you know, a very, very simple operation. Uh, another operation can be, let's say, multiplication by 5. So first, you multiply by minus 1, which is negation. And then you multiply by 5. If you start with any number, and you first multiply by minus 1, and then multiply by minus 5, it's exactly the same as if you would multiply by minus 5 first, and then by minus 1. That's the property of multiplication. Now, but not all different uh, operations, unary operations on the same set, have this property of interchanging their places. And here's a very interesting example. Um, let's consider an operation of rotation um, rotation of points on a plane um, let's say by 90 degrees counterclockwise. Now, what does it mean? Let's put coordinates. That's easier. And let's have, let, let's have, let's say, 7 and 3. 
Now, if I turn the whole um, plane, all the points on the plane, by 90 degree counterclockwise around the center, then this particular uh, point, let's call it x, now the perpendicular to it would be this, and obviously this would be 7, and this would be minus 3. So I just turn by 90 degrees, and obviously the whole rectangle will turn 90 degrees, which means this will go to this, and this will go to this. That's why this is minus 3 and this is 7. So we have point Y. So from 7, 3, we got to minus 3, 7. So this point is 7 on x-axis and 3 on y-axis. And this point is minus 3 on x-axis and 7 on y-axis. All right, this is one transformation, one operation, which is turning by 90 degree counterclockwise of all the points on the plane. Now, let's consider another reflection. Um, relative to, let's say, y axis. So reflection relative to y axis. Now, what happens with a point y if I reflect it to point z? Obviously, this is 3, 7. So after reflection, minus 3, 7 will go to 3, Okay, great. So these are, this is F, and this is G. We have two different transformations of the points, and I have applied first the F transformation, F operation, to the point 7, 3, got minus 3, 7, and then this. So basically what I can say is, that 0.73 will go to 3.7 as a result of um, first was F and then it was G. So G composition with F. This is an operation which transforms 0.73 X point to 0.3.37 which is Z point. Okay, great. Now, let's do the opposite. Instead of GF, I will use FG, which means first I will apply the G transformation, which is reflection, and then F transformation, which is rotation. Okay, so reflection relative to Y axis from X, I will get Y prime, which is 7 will go to minus 7, and this will be 3. So my 7, 3 will go to minus 7, comma, 3. This will be the result. And now I turn 90 degree counterclockwise, which is this way. And obviously, it will be in this point. So minus 7, 3 will go to minus 3, 7. Uh, minus 3, minus 7 this point. Minus 3 and 7. So in this case, as you see, point 0.73 was converted by F composition with G into minus 3 minus 7. So as you see, the result is not the same. In one uh, case, when I'm composing first F and then G, the result is this point. And if I'm doing the, the, in reverse, G and then F, the result would be different. So if two different compositions uh, produce the same results, 
if operations f and g uh, produce the same result regardless of what order we apply them, then we call them commuting with each other. So f and g might, um, might have this property of regardless of the order, so f and g is exactly the same as g and f for any argument uh, from the domain, then we call them commutative. We, we, we are talking about these operations are commuting or commute each other. Um, example is obviously um, two different multiplications or uh, let's say um, two different rotations by 90 degree and then by let's say 180 degree or something like this. These operations commute. Um, now, how about, um, let's say, one operation would be addition of uh, x would go to x plus 5. This is one operation. So any number, I add 5. That's my operation. Another operation would be I multiply that number by x. Now, do they commute or not? Well, let's just see. If I want to do f and g of x, what is it? So first g is applied, so it's 2x, and then I add 5, so it's 2x plus 5. What about g and f of x? First I apply f, which is plus 5, and then I multiply by 2, so it's 2x plus 10, which is different. So these two operations do not commute. But two multiplications do, or two additions, for instance, do, by different numbers. Okay, so we talked about commuting unary operations. Now let's go to, oh no, one more. One more. So, um, there is another property, it's called associativity. So, what is this? Basically, it's this. If you have f and g and h, you have three different operations, all unary operations. Well, by definition, what is this? Well, by definition, it's f and G and H of X, which is F of G of H of X. Right? That's where it is. Well, but you know what? I can define it differently. I can define it this way, in which case it would be, first this should be applied to x, which is, again, first h, then g, and then f to the result. Well, same thing, right? So it looks like it doesn't really matter how I define where I put the parentheses here. So in this case, we're talking about associativity of unary operations. All right, so we talked about commutative property and associative property. Now let's switch to the binaries, binary operations. We also have a concept of commutative and associative properties. Um, binary operation Now, if order is not important for the result for any pair of x and y which belong to the domain, then we are talking about this particular operation f being commutative. 
Now, if instead of this notation I'm using something like this, what it means is is this. Now, are all binary operations commutative? Well, you know about addition or multiplication of two different numbers, right? Well, apparently, not exactly. Sometimes we have a completely different case. And here is the case when it's not true. Let's consider as our domain, so, and actually not our domain, an uh, element which is supposed to be um, Cartesian product with, it, with itself. Um, set of all strings. So we have a set of all strings, and we define operation of uh, concatenation. All right. So if you have a string A, B, C, and you have, let's say, I, I'll, I'll use plus sign, but it doesn't really matter what, what, what the sign actually is. Let's call it X, Y, Z. The result is A, B, C, X, Y, Z. This is what concatenation actually means. If you have one uh, string of characters concatenated with another, you get basically all characters from the first continued with all characters from the second. Now, is this operation uh, commutative? Absolutely not, because x, y, z plus a, b, c would result in a completely different string. So that's where the order is important. This is the first argument. This is the second argument of the Cartesian product. So in some cases, operation, binary operations can be commutative. In some cases, not. Now, let's talk about associative property. Now, associative property is the property of the order of three different operations. So if you have, let's say, uh, operation F, and then you do this. Um, you first do operation on these two, and then the result of this the result of the first application on x and y is used as the operand for the second application. Now, at the same time, we can uh, do different, in, in different order, we can first apply operation on y and z, and then use this uh, as the second operand uh, for, for the next application of operation F. It looks a little better if I will use a different uh, symbolic, uh, different symbolics here. Okay, this is the definition of our binary operation. Now, if I have three arguments, I can either use this, That's what this means. Or, in this order, it's x, so right now, the difference is where exactly I put the parentheses. Now, again, we all know that if this binary operation is <coughs> excuse me, um, addition or multiplication or <coughs> something like this, um, then the order of parentheses is really not important because operation is associative. Um, how about our string operation, the concatenation? Well, apparently, if you have three different strings and first you apply to the first two and then the result to The third string, you will get what? First, you get A, B, C, D, E, F plus 
GHI, which is equal to A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. Now, if you do it in a different order, so you put parentheses here, what happens? Well, it would be like this. It would be A, B, C plus the result of this operation, G, E, F, G, H, I, which is equal to A, B, C, G, E, F, G, H, I, which is exactly the same as this one. So concatenation, although it's not commutative operation between two strings, still has associativity as its main uh, property. Now, together with uh, the property of having uh, this operation commutative and dissociative, I would also like to introduce a concept of a unit element in this case. Here is what unit element is defined with. Okay. I will use the following symbolics. I will use um, letter E to define a unit element. If this is true for any element x, so the operation which is applied to the element x and one particular unit element, if it results in the same x, that's the definition of this unit element. If this element exists, which, ha which has this property, then it's called a unit element. Now, what's the unit element for addition? Obviously, zero. No matter what number you choose, in the beginning, you add zero, and you will get exactly the same number. For operation of multiplication, the unit element is number one. You multiply number one by any number, and that number remains the same. All right, so that's just the definition, nothing more than that. Um, there are certain properties which we can go into, but maybe a little later, of unit element. Uh, another interesting uh, uh, property is inverse element. Inverse element is the following. Uh, y is called an inverse to x if the result of the operation of one element uh, on its inverse is the, uh, is the unit element. So first, it assumes that there is a unit element. That's number one. And secondly, if for an element x, there is an element y, which results in the operation in the unit element, then this element y is called inverse to x. Now, is inverse element always exist? Well, no. There are cases when there are no inverse element, in some cases. Um, even for the same operation, for some elements, you might actually have an inverse element, and for some other element, you might not. So it all depends. Now, in case of addition, for any element, um, there is an inverse. Uh, which is the negative element. For 5, it's minus 5. Um, in case of multiplication, uh, there is an inverse element uh, uh, for everything which is not 0. You know, for multiplication, to get 1, you have to combine the number and 1 over this number but not if r is equal to 0. So in some cases, in some operations, inverse elements do exist. In some cases, they're not. Mm, OK. Uh, what's the inverse operation, for instance, for, uh, let's say, oh, by the way, in inverse operations uh, can, can be introduced in, in unary case as well. And, and here is what, what I meant. If you have one operation,
and then you have another operation which being applied to the result of the first gives exactly the same thing then these two operations are called inverse to each other uh, let's consider the following operation it's called identity operation for any x the corresponding result of this operation is exactly the same x for any x in the in the domain now what does this mean it means that f and g is an identity operation and g and f also so basically it's the combination of these two properties not just this because this means that the f is the first one and the g is the second one but it can be another way around in this case we would definitely can we definitely can say that the g and f are mutually inverse to each other if the f is inverse to g g is inverse to f so in case of unit operations uh, this inverse uh, it also the concept of inverse operation exists in the same you know fashion as uh, in binary operation when we're talking about inverse elements and now there is a very interesting connection between unary operations and, and binary operations and here is the connection let's say you have a binary operation uh, I will use this sign, this symbol, as a binary operation. Now, let's assume that you have an element E such that uh, application of our binary operation on any x and this particular element E results in the same x. Let's uh, define a unary operation now why is it a unary operation well by definition unary operation has one argument and in this case it's x so for every x I put into a correspondence the result of this operation the result of a binary operation of x and this particular element e which happen to be unit element of a binary operation well obviously this is since i have this i of x is equal to x right so i is identity operation so from a binary operation which has a unit element we basically derived a, a unary operation which happened to be inverse okay so the existence of the unit oper uh, of the unit element for binary operation actually results in existence of identity operation on the same uh, domain. Now, how about more general approach? Let's say I have a base fixed element of a domain call it B now this is this is a unary operation so if I have a binary operation and I have chosen a specific base element, it actually defines a unary operation as a result of application of a binary operation on any x which belongs to the set, and this particular fixed element b. So if b happens to be my unit element of my uh, binary operation, then f of x would be identity function. But let's consider this. What if I have chosen two different elements, two different base elements? One is based on B, and another is based on C. Now, what is a combination of these two uh, unary operations? 
Well, first I have to apply x, uh, g to the x, and that would be x plus c. Then result would be b. So first I apply g, which means I uh, do the binary operation with c, and then I apply f, which means the result of the first operation would be applied to a binary operation with, with, with a fixed element b. I would love this to be this. Why? It just looks better. Because in this particular case, I can say that the composition of two different uh, by, uh, unary operations derived from this binary would be a unary operation which is derived from the binary operation on the basis. I mean, that looks much better. However, I cannot usually say this unless I have associativity. So if my binary operation is associative, then I can actually do this. And that's actually why associativity is a very important factor. Associative binary operations produce the corresponding unary operations with fixed binary, which really uh, very harmoniously, if you wish, uh, uh, can, can be described very harmoniously because the composition of the unit uh, operations would be uh, a, a, a unit operations derived from a composition of the base elements. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to do this. And now, applying to, uh, for instance, case of inverse elements, what if B and C are inverse to each other? which means B and C are equal to a unit element of the uh, binary operation. Well, let's say if binary operation is addition, maybe it's 5 and minus 5. If it's a multiplication, maybe it's 2 and 1 half, or whatever else. So in this particular case, I can say that the composition of these two uh, would be, so if if B and C are inverse to each other, then C uh, operation B will give me a unit element, and then X with a unit element would be just an X. So in this case, H of X would be an identity operation. It would be X plus unit, oper uh, plus unit which, is, which is exactly X. So in case my operation is associative, then my derived unary operations have this very good property. Um, the unit operation derived from inverse elements basically is uh, uh, inverse operations. So again, let me just repeat it. Unary operations derived from two different inverse elements, inverse in terms of binary are inverse to each other unary operations, because B and G would result in an identity in this case. Right? So this is F and G. All right. Did that make sense? Let me see. Okay. Right. Um, just as an example, I, I don't know, um, it, it, it might actually work just a little bit better if I, if I do um, kind, kind of examples of this particular case. Let's consider again multiplication. So instead of this number, pound, sign, whatever, I use plain multiplication. Then my unit element is 1. Okay, now, my 
uh, unary operation is a multiplication by some number b. Another unit operation is a multiplication by some number c. Now, if b times c is equal to 1, it means b and c are inverse to each other, then, obviously, my uh, f composition with g would be, first, I multiply Uh, well, I jumped over one, one step here. I did not mention that multiplication is associative operation, and that's why uh, consecutive application of uh, first G and then F, let me put it here, F of G of X. What is it? Now, G of X is X multiplied by C. And now, the F application is multiplication by B. But since we have a multiplication, and multiplication is associative, if you have three different numbers multiplied by each other, it doesn't really matter what the order is. That's why it's X times C times B. So that's why I have written this. It's only because my multiplication is associative operation. But now, if b times c is equal to 1, or c times b equal to 1, this is x, which means f of g, f and g, or f composition with g, is an identity operation. And that's why we're talking about f and g being inverse to each other in terms of unary operations. All right. Um, there are certain additional properties, a little bit more, um, maybe, I would say, less trivial, more difficult. It's probably too strong a word. And uh, I might actually go through exercises uh, on the website and some other lectures. Basically, I wanted to give a general description uh, of operations as just one small step into the abstract uh, world from something which we all used to have, like operations of multiplication, addition, um, rotation, negation, whatever else. Um, so uh, again, the purpose of this is um, to prepare you for abstract thinking, to prepare you to create certain objects just in your head, completely unrelated to the real, to the real world. That's where the pure creativity is, and, that, and that's why I call mathematics some kind of a uh, ultimate creative art, if you wish. Okay, that's it for today. Um, you can uh, always find this lecture and many others on unizor.com, which is a very, very convenient website, not only for the students who want to learn a little bit more or deeper or more interesting math, but also it's very useful for the parents who would like to supervise the educational process of their um, students, their children. Uh, teachers might use it as, uh, as an additional uh, educational material because it's easy in a way that students can basically um, study the theory using my lectures and then go through the exams and uh, the purpose of the teacher in this case is just to basically check the, how exams are going. That's it. Thank you very much.